Hey everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about EV adoption and EV infrastructure in Singapore. Uh, this is part of the Singapore Green Plan 2030 and the objective of this discussion is to talk about the current state of EV infrastructure in Singapore, speed bumps that will slow down EV adoption, and lastly, uh, suggestions and feedback to increase uh, EV adoption. Now to put a bit of uh, context for viewers who may not be from Singapore, right? Uh, we are a small city uh, and, and a perfect place to deploy EV infrastructure and autonomous vehicles. Uh, however, we have uh, fallen behind and we're currently playing catch up. So what can we do to move forward? I will leave politics and economical reasons out of this discussion. So to better understand the conversation we're having here, Singapore ultimately aims to be a car light nation. Hence, private transportation has always taken a back seat. There are challenges to adopting EVs. 70% uh, of our population lives in public housing. Drivers who want to own an EV are reliant on public infrastructure. Also, vehicle sales are largely dependent on dealerships. So if EVs are not profitable or too expensive, it will also slow down EV adoption. So I will be breaking this down into a few different areas uh, or pointers to guide this conversation. We will talk about charging infrastructure, parking, COE, road tax, additional fuel component, and rebates. So let's talk about the charging infrastructure. Let's start with um, some numbers, all right? So the total vehicle population in Singapore right now is around 4,300 uh, EVs on the road. Now, this includes plug-in hybrids. Now, of which uh, this number, it includes cars, taxis, and uh, other good vehicles. Now, for taxis, we have about 304. Uh, for goods and other vehicles, we have about 400 uh, goods vehicles. Now, for private cars, the number that um, LTA has given is around 3,000 vehicles. However, out of these 3,000 vehicles, we do not know how many of them are private hire vehicles. That means uh, drivers who use them for Grab, Gojek, or uh, Ride, or whatever ride sharing services out there. Now, the reason why this is important, right, is because private hires and taxis, um, they charge twice a day uh, for at least 45 to 90 minutes per charge. Okay, so the, it's very important that uh, I think LTE needs to recognize that uh, of, of the number of private vehicles out there, how many of them are actually private hire uh, vehicles? Uh, this will help them give a better idea on how, much, how many charging points uh, do we need. On the topic of how many charging points do we need, I have an Excel sheet uh, that, calculates, that calculates these numbers. Now, I will link to it in the comments below. However, today I will not be running through uh, that Excel sheet, mainly because it is, there's quite a lot of numbers in it and it can be quite detailed. So uh, I'll just briefly and quickly give you some information from the Excel sheet and uh, I will also uh, just screenshot the picture here so that you can have a look at it. So there are a few main assumptions for, for this, uh, I, I call it the EV mobility requirement. Now we have to take note of a few things, right? Number one is the available charging hours per EV charger. Now, uh, the reason for this is, as mentioned before, there's a real world time usage of this charger. Yes, the infrastructure is there 24 seven. However, humans, we need to sleep. So uh, we assume that for six hours a day, most of these chargers are not used. Now, the next thing to take note is utilization efficiency, right? So charge stations are not fully utilized all the time. Uh, hence the point above. And also certain locations will get more traffic than others, right? So we mentioned that EV owners will always charge at their own convenience. So these are patterns that will appear. Now, also again, back to square one, owners can only charge based on their limited schedules. Now, why this, um, why this calculation is important, right? It's because we have to take note um, of the type of use of EVs on the road. We cannot just calculate uh, the number of EVs on the road. The reason for this is quite straightforward and it's explained in the Excel sheet uh, here. Now, taxis and private hires, now they are going to charge seven times a week for sure. All right, each day, they're going to use the charger for 1.5 hours. Now, why I say this is because, yes, right now, the current range of EVs are around 300 to 400 kilometers, right? However, that's a usable range, right? You can most likely charge, uh, you most likely have to charge a vehicle after you've driven 260 or 280. Also, 
the last 20% of a charge is always slower than anything before that. So most taxis and private hire vehicles are going to charge at least twice a day. Now they're going to do it between 20 to 80%, 20 to 80%. Now each time they go to the charging station, they are going to use up one charging lot. All right. So compare this to the private vehicle, like an EV owner, right? So if you, if you for example, if you drive 300 kilometers or 240 kilometers per week for private vehicles, now you're only going to charge about 1.5 times a week on average. Okay. So this is a huge difference, right? And the reason why I bring this up is ever since there are more taxis on the road, like public infrastructure, is, it's harder to find an EV charger, especially at hotspots, uh, areas where it's convenient, right? Where it's not out of the way, it's central, uh, it's like holding points for taxi drivers to, to go there and charge the vehicles. Now, taxis will definitely use up a lot of our charging infrastructure. Now, this has to be taken into account. So uh, yeah, so this is for the Excel sheet. I don't want to go into too much detail here. Uh, if you want me to do a separate video on this, uh, I, I'm willing to do it. Uh, just leave it, let me know in the comments below and we'll see how many people are asking for this, uh, for me to run through this Excel sheet. Uh, if there's not much people, then I'll just, uh, you, can, you guys just, just have a look at the Excel sheet and try to understand some numbers from there. Now, when it comes to EV infrastructure, all right, um, LTA says that there are 2,200 charging points in Singapore. Uh, the question here is, are they all publicly accessible? I've asked uh, LTA and MOT twice uh, about this issue, but uh, I've not gotten a response on it. Uh, it's been dodged straight up. So uh, I hope this is something that they will clarify. And also the next thing is uh, Blue SG accounts for at least 1,500 charging points. Now this is important because Blue SG charging infrastructure or their charging speed is at 3.7 kilowatts. Now for context, right, you are, you're, if you want a full charge uh, with Blue SG, you're going to plug in your vehicle for at least 14 to 20 hours depending on how big the battery pack of your vehicle is. Now to truly support the EV network, uh, the Green Plan has stated that uh, the target here is around um, one charging station for every five EVs, which I think it should be four to five EVs, but there's a ballpark around there. Now, to, to have a good estimate, there's about one deck of chargers per multi-storey car park. However, in the near term, uh, we are targeting around at least three chargers uh, per MSCP. Now, in a neighborhood radius, right? So we can't deploy chargers in every single multi-story car park. But what we can do is to deploy them in certain multi-story car parks and then have them serve a radius. So this is the situation uh, with charging infrastructure right now. So then let's come to the problem, right? Um, on paper, it looks like there are so many charging points, but why do drivers or EV owners say that there are not enough chargers? And the reason for this is quite simple. So drivers charge during their available hours. Um, the best case scenario for um, EV ownership in Singapore is if you have EV charging um, availability at either work or at home. However, uh, this will not be in place until at least five years later. So what happens uh, when such a situation arises is Drivers can only charge either um, at night when the vehicle is not moving or um, after work, lunchtime, dinner, supper. Now those are the mainly the only available hours for uh, a private EV owner to charge their vehicle. Now, having said this, certain locations also receive much higher traffic. So owners will always charge vehicle at their own convenience. Right? So this is something that we have to take note. You will not drive out of the way just to charge your vehicle because going there and coming back is a cost itself. Right? If you take um, an additional 5% of battery life to go uh, to the charging, infra charging station and 5% more to return, then that is inefficient. Also, now we come to the bulk of, um, bulk of the charging points in Singapore are Blue SG. Right, the 2,200 charging points number that LTA has given is for Blue SG's 3.7 kilowatt chargers. So those chargers does not really make a difference to um, for a private owner. For example, if you go into a car park and if you plug in your vehicle for one hour, if you only get back 3.7 kilowatt, that's barely five percent or even less uh, than your total charge. So 
Um, I think uh, my suspect is that Blue SG's numbers are only um, calculated right now because uh, we don't have enough numbers to put out uh, to the public. So we're just using those numbers as a filler. However, LTA really needs to understand that Blue SG charges should not be part of this equation. Uh, Blue SG charges are perfect for the ride sharing network. Now, in the spirit of giving feedback and suggestions, right, um, I'm definitely not some infrastructure planner, neither am I. Uh, <laughs> I was never trained for this, right? So I can only give my experience based on, uh, like, as an owner and also doing my research on this topic, right? So uh, just for context, right, um, I've spoken to LTA since uh, December. I raised this up, and over the past four months, they've given me some replies of which have been, um, it's not the best replies that I've got, and it's clear that I think they don't really have so much data to work with right now, or maybe they're not even collect, collecting any data. So with this comes my solution and also a suggestion right, to the team uh, at LTA who is doing this, uh, who is planning for our EV network, right? I think. So here are a few pointers which I feel is very important. Now, LTA can partner with data.gov, right? Um, I think infrastructure is better planned with live data, okay? So, LTA should partner, or rather all our charging infrastructure um, providers should be providing data to LTA, and then this data should be shared in the network, and it should be open access to everyone. Um, now, this, this data should be open source, uh, so that um, anyone who wants to do a map, can, or, or wants to do an app, can map out all the EV chargers in Singapore. In fact, even Google can have access to these EV chargers, and it can be put on Google Maps. Now, these are small little things, but makes a huge difference, right? So for EV ownerships, you don't want to have multiple apps, right? You don't have multiple apps where you have to search and scan through, uh, okay, if I want to go to, if I want to go to Bishan, or if I want to go to Tampines, or if I want to go to the West, now where are the chargers? Like, is there a charger near me? So you can argue that there is plug share. However, plug share uh, is, is community based, right? So people have to upload these chargers onto the app. And plug share also doesn't tell you when and <laughs> when a charger is being used. Now, all this is because uh, most of the charging providers are not talking to each other. There is no central database, and I think um, LTA should take a stand and move forward with this, where everything should, like every provider has to give uh, the data to LTA. And because the, the reason for this is quite straightforward, right? Like EV charging is an infrastructure, right? That will power a transportation network. So it's going to be very important. Now with this data, we can then deploy more infrastructure at hotspots. Uh, we can also understand why these hot, hotspots exist, right? We, we don't want to have a self-fulfilling prophecy where just because there are way more chargers there, everyone is going to that area to charge. That, well, that's obvious, right? But what we want to know is why hotspots exist. Uh, so I think these maps give people a, a better understanding, right? And it also gives consumer a better way to, uh, how do I put it? To make a decision, right? Uh, if, you, if I know that this area is always full at between 4 to 6 p.m., then I'm going to avoid this 4 to 6 p.m. So all these things will help uh, consumers adopt EV better. Now, the next thing is to offer off-peak rates to providers to entice off-peak charging. Now, this will, distribute, uh, this will distribute the usage of EV structure. Now, I also think that taxis and private hire vehicles should have their own mini charging hubs to minimize strain on the public network. So until the day, that we have one deck of MSC, uh, one deck of EV chargers per multi-story car park. I think uh, taxis and private hire vehicles uh, should have their own mini hubs, right, where they can plug in the charge. And this should be fast chargers, right? These uh, fast chargers should be put in for them where they can plug in for half an hour and go, right? The minimum should be 110 kilowatts. Uh, DC 50 is not fast, uh, so 110 to 200 kilowatts. That should be the standard at these mini hubs. So let's move on to parking fees and um, limited in installations over the next three to five years. Now, majority of Singaporeans live in public housing estates, okay? So charging at HDB car parks is the solution, okay? That's, it's a no-brainer, right? Home charging and charging at work is the solution to an EV network. However, in the near term, it is not possible to install chargers at every single multi-story car park. So what the government is doing, right? So let's talk about the facts first. So what LTA is doing is that chargers are being deployed for vicinities, all right? So um, one HDB car park is supposed to serve a certain area. 
uh, like a certain neighborhood, okay? It's not meant to cater to only the owners staying at that particular estate. The next thing, charging installations will coincide with HDB upgrading. Now, the reason for this is obvious, right? You don't want to install a charger for two years only then for, for the car park to be rebuilt or upgraded. So all this will slow down the deployment of chargers in the short term. So now, for with the numbers of four EVs to one charger or five EVs to one charger, each MSCP needs one deck of EV chargers to support an EV fleet. One deck is about 20 EV chargers. So right now, we are only deploying three chargers per neighborhood. Okay, so this is, herein lies the problem. So the role of EV chargers will only be at newer estates or estates that have already undergone upgrading, right? So limited chargers at limited locations. Now, not every MC, MC, MSC, MCSP will have a charger. This means owner will not have true home charging. So most likely I have to park my vehicle uh, in an adjacent car park and walk back home. Now that's about 400 to 800 meters walk usually. Now, the biggest problem with this is parking fees. With a seven kilowatt charger, you are going to pay at least eight hours of parking when you charge your vehicle. Now that's 40% of the charge cost, right? So yes, we are deploying chargers for neighborhoods. However, drivers will never use these chargers because they are not going to pay eight hours parking fees just to charge their vehicle. So the one obvious solution for this, or a suggestion in fact, is to tie up with HDB, right? To have vicinity season parking for EV owners. So for EV owners who live within a one to two kilometer, <laughs> one kilometer radius, right? I don't think anybody's gonna walk for two kilometers. But anyway, so they should have vicinity season parking, right? Grant EV owners uh, season parking for a certain area so that when they're charging the vehicle, they don't have to pay uh, they don't have to pay for, 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 for parking. This is, I think this is basic, right, to deploy. Since we have taken time to install these chargers, or we are going to take time, then interim, this is the best uh, possible solution. In fact, it is not ideal, right? If, if you're driving a vehicle, it's for convenience. You, not everyone is willing to walk 400 meters to 800 meters uh, home every day just to charge their vehicle, or even once a day, right? So what happens if it rains the next day and you get caught in the rain? So private owners may not be that flexible. And if you're gonna deploy these things, then there should be accompanying solutions to it. So this is my suggestion for, uh, uh, to solve the, the parking problem uh, to charge your vehicles. So we have come to the end for charging infrastructure, which is part one. Now in part two, we'll be exploring the policies that can help uh, increase EV adoption or the policies that are slowing EV adoption instead. So uh, again, if you like the content uh, that is being put out, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any good suggestions or questions that you want to ask about EVs or EV lifestyle in general, please just put them in the comments below. And I'm pretty sure the community will be more than happy to help you out with it. Uh, with that, have a great week ahead and see you guys in the next one.